Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena and welcome to episode 61 of Game Programming. So last time we took a look at creating the spawn level, which is right over here, um, and implementing all the tiles that it used and all the colors for the tiles that it used, which you can see right here. Now, this time, today, we're gonna take a look at actually, um, you know, going into the spawn level, I guess, or loading the spawn level into our game. So first of all, this hierarchy we've got here, it seems like in resources, we've got textures and then levels. That's kind of not cool because levels isn't in texture. So let's just cut that and put it up here. So we have in, res in our rain, this is just our normal rain directory. We have resources and then we have levels and textures. Um, awesome. So now let's, let's freaking do it. So right now over here, we've got a level, we've got a spawn level, right? And it's in slash levels slash spawn, right? Which is actually correct because I think last time we fixed it. But um, it's in resources, which is already in the build path, so you don't need to specify that. But um, it is in in um, in levels, and then spawn.png, which is where the file is located. Now, what we need to do now, basically, is um, is make sure that we actually read all the tiles. So currently, you can see that we've got three different tiles, and we return, you know. A bunch of we've, we've basically got three different types of tiles to return and obviously in our level there's a lot more because if you look over here into tile there are well there's freaking six right here um two of them are new unused so far but we need four um so let's implement that right now so if we go into tile we've got out we've made all of our tiles we actually did that last time which is awesome and over here, you'll see that we actually created all of the spawn grass, spawn hedge, spawn water wall one, wall two, and spawn floor. And we've already attributed all the sprites. So that's pretty easy. Um, we've pretty much done everything. So all we need to do now is put it into practice. So over here, instead of if tiles equals, you know, this color, let's, um, let's just say that if tiles equals um, tile dot uh, color will be, let's just say floor, right? So if it's floor, then return tile dot spawn floor. And if that equals tile dot color um, grass, right? Then we'll return tile dot spawn grass. And so on until we um till we get everything down. So over here we'll just say which one haven't we done? Hedge, for example. Hedge isn't really done yet, but we'll still put it in here so that we can um because because it does exist. So spawn hedge. Um, and then we'll just copy this a bunch of times because we're going to need it. So if tile color equals wall one, for example, then we'll return tile dot spawn wall one. Um, and if and we're going to do the same thing for wall two as well. I'm just going to zoom through this wall one. You can basically t <laughs> you can't really tell because um L kind of looks like one. Uh, and I think we've got. Uh, is that no? There's one more definitely. There's water, which we haven't actually done yet. But um, but whatever. I think have we even done that? Yeah, we have. We have made the file for it, um, or the the object for it rather. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's it. Okay. So what we should be able to do now is just launch our game, and it should it should yeah it should display it, but it crashes. And if we take a look at this crash in depth. Uh, we've actually getting getting an illegal argument exception now. What does that mean? You can see right over here that it's actually brought up image IO to read um, What that means basically is that it's reading the wrong like it can't find the file. That's what it means um, So I'm not exactly sure where it's failing to read the file So if we just run here, we can see that input equals null which means the file is not found in load level So in spawn level over here. So um path where, where does path come from? looks like path comes from I think the origin of path is right over here. So you can see over here that in our game directory, when we actually set level equal to something, it's just equal to new spawn level, um, textures levels, um, level.png. Now you can see straight away that all I've done is I've moved levels, the folder, up into you know a different directory. And what's happened as a result of that, the game's gotten broken in two cases. We fixed it in here, right? But um, but it, it looks like it's kind of the same fix needs to be applied here. So that's, that's bad programming. That's just lets me know that, um, that, you know, if you got to fix the same error twice, like you're not coding, you're doing it wrong, bro. Like you're not, you're not coding properly. So, um, if I go back to level, you'll see that 
level spawn equals new, and then we can just set it equal to new spawn level. Actually, we should probably done that last time. But it equals to new spawn level, there's a, there's a path. And because it's static, instead of this, right, and if we go back to our game.java, instead of making a new instance of it, let's just set it equal to level.spawn, and that's it. And that kind of fixes, that kind of kills two birds with one, with one stone. First of all, it simplifies our code a lot, and second of all, it, it solves that, um, that error, that input equals null error. So, yeah, let's just launch our game now and see what happens. All right, would you look at that? We are in the level that we made. That is pretty cool. That wood texture kind of looks like, the floor texture kind of looks like rubbish. But, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, look at that. That is awesome. First time I've seen the thing. In, oh, and there's our spawn point. I totally forgot about our spawn point. Let's, um, let's save the spawn point for next time because I want to talk in detail about how that's going to work. But, um, yeah, that's that's how we load our um that's how we load our world. This is really cool actually. Apart from the the wall texture actually looks pretty good. Um surprisingly. <laughs> but the floor texture it like it, it kinda works, but when it sort of trails off here, it um it kinda doesn't work. That looks really beautiful as well. Um so collision detection is obviously something that will be implemented soon. I'm still not sure if I like um the this the thirty two by thirty two size player. I'm not sure if I want 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. We'll obviously experiment both ways, but um, yeah, I'm still running at three and a half thousand FPS, which is awesome. But um, yeah, so that's that's pretty damn awesome. Um, yeah, wow, that's really cool. Okay, I'm actually yeah, this this looks really nice, like aesthetically. Um, but yeah, that's sort of how our game rolls. Um, we could probably add some subtle shadows as well in the future just to make it look a bit better. That's, yeah, that'll definitely be implemented. But, um, yeah, you can sort of see how the spawn level looks like, which is, um, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so you can see, by the way, that, um, this is actually an important note to note. Uh, it, it's actually a mere coincidence that could be, if you look at, um, if I just go back into levels, right, and spawn, um, you can see that I actually used a blue color the spawn, right? You can see that the spawn point was marked by blue, and it's sort of blue, like obviously it's a different shade, but that's more like teal in the in the actual level file. But it's blue. So why is that happening? That is there because if we go into our code and we look at this, it says that if if basically if none of these statements are true, in other words, if the colors on the level does not match up our colors, um, you know, our tiles, our tile colors, our defined tile colors, then we're just going to re return a void tile. And void tile is set currently to be um, uh, void tile, sprite dot void tile. Um, it's set currently to be this color. So I mean, we, we could probably make it black. I kind of like that color though, but um, we could just make it black by putting zero there. And uh, if we restart our game and go all the way down. Oh yeah, you can see straight away that it's black. But um, so let's just go down. The reason that I don't like to make it black, um, this feels like a path. <laughs> the reason that I don't, that I don't wanna, wanna make it black is because um, black can sometimes, like especially when you're doing lighting, black just black can sort of interfere with that. But um, yeah, so yeah, we're just meant black. So I'll probably keep it as that blue color. That'll be like our signature void tile color. But um, other than that, you know, it, 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 you're instantly like, oh, all right, there's a void tile there. Something's not working or something isn't really working as it's supposed to, which is, uh, which is pretty sick. But yeah, anyway, that's episode 61 of game programming. Now, I'm sorry to sadden you guys with this news, but I'm actually going away for a week, which means I will not be home in my office for a week, which means I can't make videos for a week. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But uh, game programming will resume on the 9th of February, I believe. Yeah? Yes. Because I'm leaving tomorrow, I'll be back on the 8th, and obviously I'll be too tired then to make a video. But, um, so Saturday, I think it's Saturday, let me just check quickly. Yep, Saturday the 9th of February. That's when the next episode of Game Programming will be. Um, but until then, guys, have a great week. Have a great next week, and I'll see you guys later.